Hello there and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be looking at the solution to the 2019-2020 Physics Practical Exam Graph for first year students of the River State University. Now, question 20 here is a graphical question and it comes with 20 marks, all right? So this is a question for 20 marks. The question 20, 20 here says, the following readings were obtained in an experiment. So you have this table here. A says, using a suitable scale, plot a graph of P against R. B says, estimate the slope of the graph. C says, if P and R are related by the equation P equal to A, a squared R, determine the value of A from the graph. All right, let's get this done. So the first thing here, A says, using a suitable scale. All right, so you choose a suitable scale um, for your graph. It says plot a graph of P against R. Now, what we know is this. If I'm plotting a graph of P against R, the first thing I have here, the first parameter I have here, should go to the vertical axis. That means I'll plot P on the vertical axis and I'll plot R on the horizontal axis. All right, so let's get to my graph sheet. All right, so we have this graph here. So this is what my graph looks like. So for yours, you have to plot your own graph. And in plotting your own graph, when you're done with this, you should have your title and your scale. Don't forget, every proper graph must have two very important information, your title and your scale. So for this case, let's look at what the title looks like. For me, the title of this graph would be, since I'm plotting a graph of P against R, the title of the graph would be graph of graph of P against R. So if you want to, better still, you can impute their units there. That means I would say graph of P, P is in volts, against R, of course, R is in amp, which is amperes. So I have, so the title of the graph becomes graph of P in volts versus R in amperes. All right, so this should be your graph, very important. After title, the next thing we should have is called the scale. So I'll take off the title so I can write down the scale for my graph. All right, so the next important information to have there is my scale used. So let's get the scale used for this graph. For this particular graph here, let's start with the um, P axis, which is the vertical axis. All right, so the next inf important information you should have here is your scale used. Um, scale used in this particular graph. Let's see the scale used. So how do you pick up scale used in your graph? For this case here, uh, if I look at this graph correctly, let's start with the p-axis, all right? So starting with the p-axis, let's see how we can possibly, um, let's see how we can possibly zoom in so we can get this value. So for my scale use, if I look at this point here, look at this point here, from the origin, which is this line here, if I move one up, I'm seeing one as a value. So it means, so one of these distance from here upwards one is called one unit. So I'll say, let one unit, please write in full, represent, represent what there? One, one word there, C is in P axis and P is in volts. So I'll say represent one volt in the P axis. Right, so this is how you do this. Let one unit represent one volt in the P axis and let one unit represent. So if I look at the R axis, from this point here, the origin to here, I still have one. It's just one unit. So one unit represents the value here for the R axis is now 0 0.1. So represent 0 0.1. On the R axis, what I have there is amperes or amp as a unit. So represent 0 0.1 amp on the R axis. All right. 
So this is how you get the SKUs, all right? So this is how um, the SKUs work. All right, so having gotten the title and the SKU, let's move over to um, question B. All right, B says, estimate the slope of the graph. So let's get slope of the graph. Um, better still, I'll just write the slope here. I'll go over to the graph and pick up values, but I'll write slope here. So slope, slope, as we know, is equal to change in the parameter on the vertical axis, which in this case is P, divided by change in the parameter on the horizontal axis, which in this case is R. If I work on this, that's equal to change in P becomes P2 minus P1 divided by, next up I have R2 minus R1. So I have this. Now, if this is the case, let's impute values. So this will now be equal to, let's get the value of P2 P1, R2, and R1 from the graph sheets. All right, so if I come here, um, this graph doesn't look like the normal one because of the kind of scale I used. But usually we know that when it comes to picking up a, a points for a slope, you look for that point. Okay, let me go back here. All right, so normally we know that uh, in a graph sheet you have vertical lines running this way and then horizontal lines running this way. Then if I look at this graph clearly, you can see that the graph slants this way. You can see it slants this way. Okay. So going back here. So I'm trying to say this. Normally your graph, you see the graph will slant this way. Like this. And in picking your slope, you look for this exact point. Look for this point here. Where the slanted line cuts the vertical line and the horizontal line perfectly. Look for this point here. So it is this point that you mark off and use for your slope, all right? But in this my kind of graph, using a system, uh, I can't really get that point here because, uh, as you can see, the graph is not like usual graph. So in a case like this where you cannot get that graph, what do you do? You improvise. And how do you improvise? You simply take two points that you use to plot your graph. And those two points must touch the line. For this case now, I will choose to use this point here, this one here. And of course, this point here. So what I'll do is very simple. I'll come here. I'll trace this point downwards like this. All right? Um, this point here, by the way, the point here is 0 0.86 and 4.30. Okay? So trace this one here to the left, this point to the left. Of course, I don't have to stress myself. I know what they are already because of the coordinate that was given, which I just wrote down here. All right, so we have this. Also, I'm picking up this point here. This point, this one here, is also on the line. So I will trace this point downwards like this, and then trace this point to the left that's like this. All right. This point here, by the way, the point here is 0 0.30, um, 0 0.30, and 1.50 so I have this all right so trace this one here to the left uh, this one trace this to the left like this draw a straight line here and draw this one here downwards that's here all right so from this now note that this point you have here is the value of p2 the point you have here is the value of p1 the, vo the point you have here is the value of r1 then what you have here is R2. So I have this. Comparing with this, co this coordinate here, what you have here is R2 and P2. What you have here is R1 and P1. So this is how you get your values. All right? All right, so having gotten these values, let's go and impute them in our solving. Right, so back to our solving, we have this. So from here, we've said P2 is about 4.3. So I have 4.30 into dp minus 
P1 is 1.50 as we got divided by R2 is 0 0.86 0 0.86 minus R1 is 0 0.3 so I have 0 0.30 alright next up I'll keep solving this is equal to so let's get numerator if I do 4.3 minus 1.50 that's about 2.8 so numerator is about 2.80 all over for denominator I have 0 0.86 minus 0 0.30 and that gives me about 0 0.56 as my result and that's equal to let's do a division 2.80 divided by 0 0.56 the answer there is 5 so I have 5 as my answer now, next up, um, every slope should also have an SI unit. So the question now will be, what's the SI unit for this particular slope? It's easy to get. If I look at my slope, um, back to this, if I look at my slope, we said slope is equal to change in P all over change in R. Don't forget P was in voltage or volt and R was in amp or amperes. So when I see voltage and amp, what comes to my mind there? I'm seeing voltage all over. Amperes is the SI unit for um, current. So when I see voltage and current, what comes to my mind? What comes to my mind is Ohm's law, right? Don't forget, Ohm's law relates voltage and current. And from Ohm's law, we have that voltage is equal to current times resistance. We have this. If I want to make resistance to stand alone, I'll divide here by current. I'll divide here by current. From here, this cancels this. So it means that resistance is equal to voltage all over amperes. In other words, for the ratio of voltage to amperes, it will be equal to, or the SI unit should be equal to resistance. And resistance, as we know, is measured in ohms, right? Resistance is measured in ohms, like this. And of course, ohms, the symbol is, and the symbol here would be this which is omega, so I have this. So that's the symbol for ohms. In other words, for this, my SI becomes 5 in ohms. So I'm having 5 ohms as my SI unit. All right, with this now, we've solved question B. The answer is 5 ohms, which is to estimate the slope of the graph, 5 ohms. Let's look at question C. Question C says, if P and R are related by the equation P equal to A squared R, determine the value of A from the graph. All right, don't forget it said from the graph. So for question C, we're given that, so we have that P is equal to A squared R. We ask to find the value of A from the graph. So first things first, I'd want to make A squared, or perhaps A, to be subject of the formula. And how do I do that? I'll have to divide here by R, divide here by R. From here, this cancels this. So it means that a squared is equal to p all over r. Now again, we know that the slope was equal to change in p all over change in r, or just p over r. So what does this tell you? Or just p over r. So what does this tell you? This tells you that this is still equal to the slope. That's the idea here, that P over R is equal to the slope. And we said the slope is equal to what there? 5 ohms. So this was the slope. So that means that A squared is equal to 5 ohms. To get the value of A, we'll take the square root of both sides. So A is equal to, square root is something as saying 5 ohm to power 1 over 2. Is same thing as square root. So this is this will now be equal to um, take this to both of them, it becomes 5 to the power 1 over 2, which is same thing as square root of 5 into ohm to the power 1 over 2. So this works. We can get the value of 5 to the power 1 over 2, in which if we punch that, we'd have that a 
is equal to, so if I punch 5 to the power 1 over 2, which is same thing as square root of 5, my answer gives me 2 points. I have 2.24 as my answer. So I'm having 2.24 as the square root of 5, and then ohm to the power 1 over 2. So this becomes the value of A. All right. So this is how we get A from the graph as instructed. All right, so going back to my question, we can see that we've successfully answered all the um, questions here. All right, so going back to my question here, we can see that we've successfully answered all the questions here. All right, so please, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, okay? So hit the like button. Also, leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed the video and also suggest other things you'd want us to treat. Also, if it's your first time or if you've not subscribed yet, please do well to subscribe to this channel and of course share to your friends so they can also learn. So hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to this channel and share this content to your friends so they can also learn. This is how you can encourage us to keep making more videos. Thank you very much and see you in our next class.